Well, welcome again, everybody. I am uh, sitting here in the Marine View studio with a good friend of mine, John Payne. And uh, on Second Sundays in our in-person services, we, we highlight some of the things God is doing in our life together and celebrate some of our mission and ministry or, or tell the stories of how God is at work in people's lives. And so, John, I'm so glad that you're here uh, to uh, share some of your story with us and what God's been up to in your life. And yeah, th so thanks for being here. And for those that don't know you yet or haven't met you, um, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, tell us a little bit about uh, your story. Thanks, Jesse. Um, well, I guess people have seen me here at church. I've been here, coming here uh, to Marine View for one year now. Mm. Um, but my story goes way back. I, I was uh, raised in Auburn, so I'm a, I'm a local kid. And uh, my, my story directly ties in with my um, disease of alcoholism mm. and and that brought me to God and so I just want to touch briefly on that because that's part that's a direct yeah, yeah. part important part of my story mm. um, so I was born and raised in born in Seattle but raised in Auburn and then um, had my first drink when I was 11 and I chase that feeling that alcohol gave me ever since mm. and which set me apart from the majority of most people in the world where I just chased alcohol mm. and by the time I was in high school and beyond it consumed my life mm. okay but backing up a little I was raised in a Catholic family I went to Catholic school and going through that that time of my life I was a very rebellious kid and I rebelled against Catholicism, rebelled against authority, and then eventually rebelled against God. Mm. And then put in um, alcohol with that, mm. and that was a volatile mix. Yeah. And I just, I was off and running. Mm. And then when I got married, had a couple of kids, um, by that time alcohol completely consumed my life, and alcohol became more important, and I ended up getting a divorce. And as time went on, I became that father that would promise to come and see his kids, never did on weekends. Mm -hmm. Consequently, the older I got and the older my kids got, they didn't like their father because I was that absent father. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the older I got, and the, the older the kids got, so my kids were estranged. I got married a second time. I lost that uh, marriage through a direct result of my drinking, my drinking kept progressing. <clears throat> um, my life was spiraling down. Mm. Um, I got married a third time and I was continually drinking and, until a family intervention mm. uh, introduced me to Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm. Um, can you imagine that my family loved me enough that they would actually... And they were sticking with you through through all the ups and downs of your, your addiction and, and yes. all of that. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the, that. So AA comes into your life, and h how did that impact you? Well, how, how has that impacted I, you? I went to AA, and I was so desperate. I went there literally. How, how could I make it through one day without a drink? Mm -hmm. I, was, I was so desperate, mm -hmm. just one day. Yeah. So I thought, what's the secret? You know, right. what, what is it? Without realizing that Alcoholics Anonymous is a spiritual program. Hmm. That's the secret. <laughs> That's I mean, awesome. that, I yeah. mean, that is the secret. Yeah, they don't tell you that when you first come in hmm. because they don't want to scare the newcomer away. Right. Um, but there are 12 steps in AA, and all throughout when you read the 12 steps, the word God kept popping up. Hmm. Well, I didn't particularly like that, but when you go to AA, you, you get a mentor, they call it a sponsor, and a sponsor walks you through these 12 steps. Yeah. And as you're going through these 12 steps, you, the hope is, is that that person, like me, the newcomer, would have some type of a spiritual awakening going through these steps. And when you have that spiritual awakening, hmm. new things start, you start seeing the world differently. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I started going through working these steps with my sponsor, and it took me about six months to go through these steps. And I did have a spiritual awakening mm -hmm. going through these steps. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met God. 
<laughs> I was 47 years old when wow. I sobered up. Wow. That was 20 years ago. Yeah, you're celebrating 20 years in recovery now. I, yeah, I yeah. just I got my 20-year AA coin last month. Yeah. But I found God 20 years ago in AA. So, mm -hmm. I, so the way I put it is I thank God. I thank God for AA, and I thank AA for God, because that's yeah. where I found God. They're, for me, they're intertwined. Yeah. I so mean, God showed up in the midst of AA, and AA was there as this help to you to introduce you to God and help you make that connection. And exactly. So it, I know God's yeah. been at work in your life in all kinds of ways uh, over those 20 years, but about a year ago, God led you to Marine View and to our life together. I'm so glad he did. But tell us a little bit about how did that happen? How, how did you get here? <laughs> well, but just, just briefly, in those yeah. 20 years. Yeah. Okay. So I was married for a third time. Okay. Okay. And, and I still believed in God, but I'll tell you what. I wasn't going to church. Oh, I wasn't yeah. reading the Bible. Right. Okay. Right. So I believed in God, but any, and, and I would pray. But then I quit praying, and then my connection with God wandered. Hmm. Okay, I still believed in God, but I wasn't having that connection. Yeah, yeah. And I was lost, and selfishness set in, and and my wife and I drifted apart. And I'm looking at myself, right? And that's all I thought of. Yeah, it was me, myself, and I. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, and so then, about a year ago. Yeah. Okay. This is the way I put it. Yeah. Okay. I, it didn't actually happen, but the way I put it yeah. is about a year ago, God tapped me on the shoulder with 19 years sobriety and said, John, it's about time you meet my son. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. He yeah. didn't actually say that, but things started happening a year ago in October. Hmm. Okay. And, and, and this is what happened a year ago. So I had come to Marine View church about maybe five, six years ago, maybe even longer, through Jazz Live. I would come here occasionally to see the jazz. I think my, I've seen Michael Powers doing his Christmas show here maybe half a dozen times yeah, through the years. Yeah. And that's probably what, how I come, but not to come to church. Sure. That's originally brought me here. Mm. Okay. So then about a year, year ago, came to a, a, a concert, okay, and then at that concert, I saw uh, Karen, came with my sister, and, and then saw Karen, Karen Payne, mm -hmm. who, you know, Karen and I have, a, have a, a long time relationship. We're friends. We used to teach together, work together years ago. She and I had met here at that, that church, or at church at the concert. So mm -hmm. here's what happened. During the break, they have that cookie break. Yeah, in the middle yeah, that's my the, favorite part. That's <laughs> no, no, I love it all. But she and I got yeah. up and we're walking out. And as we're walking out to get the cookies, we're walking past where where they have the little I don't know the little stand there where you yeah. have have the brochures. And yeah. she just happened to point over and she goes, "You ever seen this? It's called the upper room." As we mm. walk by, yeah. And she kind of pointed to one and she said. I said, oh, what's this? And she said, well, it's the upper room. And, and she kind of touched it. And she said, it's a daily devotional. Hmm. And I went, oh, well, I, I read an AA daily devotional. And she said, well, they're free. And that's all she said. And then she just kind of turned and started walking towards the cookies. I looked at it and I went, oh. So I put it in my pocket. Yeah. Didn't think anything else wow. of it. We finished the concert. I went home, pulled it out, put it on the table. I started reading the upper room. <laughs> And after reading it for a week, of course, every day there's a scripture. Sure, in it. yeah. And after a week, I went to myself, maybe I should read the Bible hmm. to match that up. So then I had to search for the Bible because I hadn't read it. I couldn't <laughs> even tell you when. So I finally found my Bible. Yeah. And then I realized, and then I read the inscription, who the person who gave it to me, and I hmm. realized I hadn't opened my Bible in 20 years. Wow. In 20 years. And so I started reading the upper room and the, and the Bible scripture every day. So after about three or four days, I was just amazed. So I picked up the phone, called Karen, and I said, what time's church on Sunday? <laughs> That's awesome. And she told me the time, and I came that Sunday, yeah. my first time. Yeah. She said, why don't you come in here, Jesse? And I came, and that happened to be 
last year on the Sunday where you had that potluck. Oh, sure. In in church yeah. where, we, where we converted the church, we pulled, we brought the tables in. And yeah. That was my first. Well, that was your first day. Yeah. That was my first day. Uh, so awesome. I mean, all of this transpired just by Karen, just out of the Christian kindness of her heart. Thank you, Karen, by the way. That she just said, "Oh, it's an upper room. They're mm-hmm. free." Wow. And and that started me coming and then I heard you yeah and your your words touched me because you were talking directly to me hmm. yeah in a, in a way that that touched my heart it it pierced me to start searching wow wow and I've been coming ever since yeah. and and this last year some amazing things have been happening yeah. to I me. love it I love this story and how God has been faithful in your oh. life in the midst of addiction, in the midst of all the struggle and, yeah. and all of that, and in recovery, getting your attention. And then I just thought, I mean, how cool that Jazz Live <laughs> led to Upper Room, led to Karen inviting you, led to yes. you coming and getting to meet some of the amazing folks at Marine View and suffer through my sermon and still God saying something <laughs> to you in the midst of that, which is amazing. <laughs> so all of that leads to you leaning in more and more to who Jesus is and what he means for your life. So Maybe talk about what that journey has been like as you've come towards Christ and Christ has come towards you. Well, it, it's made me, it made me really hungry um, for the Word because, mm. honestly, it's the first time I've ever, I've ever read the Bible. Yeah. I've ever wanted to, mm. so it's really mm. made me hungry to, to read. So I've been, yeah. I've been really focusing on the New Testament. Right. However, so so I've been doing the Sunday morning men's Bible study before church. Yeah. Okay. But then I started doing the Wednesday morning <laughs> Bible study. Right, right. Then the Thursday night Bible study with with Andrew, which right. has been focusing on last fall was the Old Testament. So that was a revelation to me. That was new. Yeah. We were, we were doing the minor prophets. Sure, yeah. So it was, this has all been opening up new things for me. So, so I've been doing all these different Bible studies, been doing the Saturday morning, not regularly, but some of the Saturday morning men's breakfast. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All of those. But then some, some very interesting things have been happening. I, I call them God shots. Some, yeah, I love some, it. Um, what, when you, you mentioned months ago, we're, we're going to have a um, baptism coming up. Yeah. And that called to me, so I, I came to you and yeah. I said, I'd like to be baptized. Yeah. And then when you said, we're going to be dunking people in the <laughs> future, right. sound, I was like, Whoa, wow. That's serious, yeah. yeah. So I invited my sister to come. I invited some friends from AA to come. Yeah, I remember. And, and that was such a joyous thing mm. for me to partake. Yeah. But here's what happened to me immediately after that. I didn't yeah. feel different when it happened right. or even a, a few days afterwards. Hmm. But my, my older brother and I, Brian, for decades have not liked each other. Mm. I don't want to say the word hate, but we don't like each other. Wow. have not liked each other for a long time. Hmm. But I've been thinking about him since I've been coming here. Yeah. Should I reach out to him? Oh, should I, shouldn't yes. I? And then fear yeah. and everything. Yeah, but I'll tell it. you, right after, the week after I, I, I got baptized, I was praying about it. And, and I just asked Jesus, you know, help me. And then a week afterwards, I, one morning I prayed and I picked up the phone and wow. I called my brother. Wow. And I reached out to him on the phone and he was receptive to me. And we had instant healing Wow. On the phone. That's it incredible. Was, it, was, it was miraculous yeah, for me. Yeah, that's this incredible. Was, this was almost two decades of wow. loathing, not liking each other yeah. at all. Yeah. And it was instant. And so just that, it Jesus instant. putting it on your heart and then giving you the courage to pick up the phone. Yes. And then providing yes. sort of this, what you call a miraculous healing in your relationship. It, it was, because I've been carrying this yeah. resentment. And yeah. then, of course, it leads to fear. Oh, I can't yeah. pick up. And, right. oh, I, you know. And then, of course, he on the other end, but he was receptive. Mm. And so, I, matter of fact, this week I was thinking of him. I called him up. It led to a 25-minute conversation awesome. the way brothers should yeah. be, right? Yeah, that's really neat. So, so God brought this healing to yeah. you. And, and there's one more thing I'd like to add, and that's how God has brought healing and restoration with my children, mm. my adult kids, and myself. 
Um, I now get a chance to be bumpa mm -hmm. <laughs> with my grandkids. Um, so to go from that, that um, drunken, absent father where they grew up with, um, they didn't like or respect, I, I now get to be the bumpa that not only gets to be with their children, my, my grandchildren, but they trust me when they uh, travel out of country. And so they, they actually trust me with their most prized possessions, mm. uh, their children. That is, um, that's truly a blessing from God, that, that they would trust me. And so I missed out on being a father, and now I get to be a loving bumpa and make those memories, and that's all a blessing mm. from God. And so I, I thank God for that. It's really so, so God brought this healing to yeah. me. And that sort of that forgiveness in some ways of just pushing past the discomfort to reach out and make things right and try to restore that. And so one incredible thing, and I know, you know, you have so yes. many of these stories of what, how God has been faithful and, and yes. getting your attention, reminding you of his love and giving you those little God sightings that, that you love so much. And um, so I just, I appreciate your story and I love what God has done in your life. And I'm grateful that, you know, we've gotten to be a part of that journey in some way. And so grateful for you and the encouragement you are to all of us. And Thanks for your, your journey. And if you had uh, something to say or an encouragement to those listening today, is there, what else would you want people to be thinking about? Well, I, I would say if, if anyone is out there and, or you know of anyone, a loved one, if you're struggling with, with the addiction of alcohol, um, you can come and talk with Jesse. You can come and talk with me. And it's very private. Mm -hmm. Because that's what AA is based on, okay? This one-on-one -on -one relationship is very private, mm -hmm. okay? And I've helped men through the years, just like it was so freely given to me. I'm still an active member of AA. I still go to AA meetings, sure. okay? That I would be willing to talk with anyone to help anyone, yeah. okay? The hand of AA will always be there, and I want to be a representative of that. And through God, God has always been good to me. Without God, I would not be sober today. Mm -hmm. And so I just, the hand of AA, I want to outstretch my hand to anyone that might need help. I'm here for you. Yeah, that's awesome, John. And thanks for being that. And uh, I encourage you, if that's a need in your life or someone in your life you know that's struggling with those things, please do reach out to John or myself. And uh, you can uh, do that through the Marine View Church office, office at marineviewpc.org is a, our email address here. Or you can call the office, 253-927-0557. And we'll make sure and follow up and connect you with John or myself. And uh, we're rooting for you. And we want good things for, for not only for ourselves and our life with the Lord, but also for all those listening in today. So uh, thank you so much for sharing your story. And I'm going to pray for us, and then uh, we'll uh, end our time. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness, your love that's unending. And um, I just appreciate my friend John, my brother in Christ, uh, someone that you love and your love has been unrelenting toward. You, you were never going to let John go and give up on him. and You don't give up on any of us. And so thank you for that. Thank you for all the ways you've been at work in his life through AA, through the people you've put in his life, and through those, those little moments along the way from Jazz Live to Karen saying, here, check this out, and uh, picking up that uh, daily bread, and uh, thinking about those opportunities with the upper room and those things. So I thank you, God, for the ways you provide. And I thank you that you've led John uh, into a relationship with your son, Jesus, and we've gotten to celebrate that with baptism and all those good things. And so we thank you for his faithful witness um, and, and, and all that, for the gift of a restored relationship with his brother and all the other ways that you're providing along the way. And for those listening that maybe are struggling or know someone who is struggling with addiction or or who are just going through the, the ups and downs, the hard things, wondering if, if you're there and if you care, uh, uh, would you just uh, reach out to us and Lord help provide the courage to do that. And we're grateful for your love, for all the ways you provide for us. Uh, you are good. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.